Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So uh, I'm not in my studio at the moment, uh, actually house sitting for uh, relatives. So we don't have a green screen today, but uh, hopefully you can see me all right and hear me all right. So today what I wanted to do is continue uh, our neural net library and uh, move into really one of the most fundamental uh, operations and that's the feed forward step. So we're going to do most of the feed forward step today, but uh, we'll leave the activation function for maybe the next tutorial. Okay, so a few little things that we have to do first of all, um, when you set up your neural nets, so one of the things that you'll see again and again with uh, neural nets is that the weights between the layers are often set to random values. So before we get started, what we might do is just make a little, uh, a little function down here in our matrix class and uh, allow our matrices to be set to random values. So I'm just going to say uh, void and we'll say randomize. Doesn't take any parameters. And I'm just going to use the um, uh, rand function. Yeah, but you can use STD rand, which is probably a better idea. You get your uh, Mersenne twister going. That's a good idea. All right, but for i equals zero, while well, i is less than total, uh, i plus plus, and we'll say data i equals. It's a float rand divided by a float uh, rand max. Okay, so if you want higher quality random numbers, then you want to use STD rand or a Mersan twister, sort of a higher quality. This is um, linear congruential, I think. It's just a very, very simple random generator uh, that you get with rand. I think for our particular circumstance, the quality of the randomness is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, so we can just use rand because it's quick. All right, so we've got to call this at some point. So let's go back to our, uh, our neural net class. And when we add the layers... Uh, we want to make sure that uh, the layers actually randomize the the weights between each. So it's going to be at add layer, set previous layer. I'll just right click and we'll go to definition. Okay, so it's right here in weights, right there. We want to uh, randomize that. So weights, randomize. Yeah, there we go. So that'll make sure that we start from a random uh, set of weights. You can actually seed the random number if you want. I mean, we really don't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff, but yeah. Okay, so if we come over to our neural net class and we go to the feed forward function or forward prop just here, the only thing that this uh, function actually has to do in the neural net class is start the feed forward process. So feed forward for us, because of the way that we've set it up, is just going to be a matter of uh, each layer um, telling the next layer to feed forward. So performing a few operations and then telling the next layer to, uh, to, to feed forward. Um, so for us, it's going to be something like, um, is it layers? Yeah, layers uh, zero feed forward. Whoops. No, what do I? <laughs> okay. What we might do also is just put a little guard at the top of our forward prop just to make sure that we're not feeding forward with zero layers or something silly like that. So I'll say uh, if uh, layers.size uh, is greater than zero, I guess, would one layer be able to feed forward? Yeah, I suppose. Won't be interesting. Um, net cannot feed forward. There are, oops, not enough layers. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so that's the forward prop there for our neural net class. That pretty much just starts the whole thing rolling. What's interesting is if we come over to the layer class, actually, I might just jump there from here. Uh, the layer class's feed forward is really where the action happens. So we'll go to definition. Uh, so what we have to do here is set the sums or the dot products of, uh, of all of these little um, weights multiplied by activations. We have to set the sums and uh, we do that by multiplying the weights of this layer by the activations matrix from the previous layer. So let's have a go. So sums, uh, it's going to be mul. Um, weights and previous layer 
activations. Yeah, something like that. So they'll have to be pointers. So the next step that we have to do is uh, is add the bias. Now, uh, I'm tempted to do this at another time, but we might just do it now. So sums... Mm. So the bias is what's called a column vector, and we don't really want to take up all of the RAM to actually store repeated uh, copies of that column vector over and over again. What we really want to do is... Uh, just reuse the same column vector, but add uh, multiple copies to our sums matrix just here. So we do that really by adding uh, another function to our matrix class. And I might call this something like uh, add col vector. So we'll go void uh, add col vec, I guess. And we'll say matrix star column vector. Uh, okay, so we have to make sure of a few things. For one thing, uh, the rows in this matrix uh, have to be equal to the number of rows in the column vector. So we need an element for each row. Uh, otherwise, we can't add the column vector. So I'll put a little guard at the top. We'll say uh, if this uh, rows does not equal col vec uh, rows. Or uh, the other thing that we've got to make sure of is we've got to make sure this is actually a column vector. Uh, a column vector is just a column of numbers. So if there's more than one column, um, then it's not a column vector. Yeah. Okay, so col vec uh, columns does not equal one. Uh, we'll just throw um, column vector must have the same number of rows and mm -hmm, a single column. Yeah, something like that. Um, okay, so now we've got to count through all of the elements in this matrix, and we've got to add the column vector. So we'll go for uh, int c for column uh, equals zero, while c is less than this uh, columns c plus plus. I get it. <laughs> uh, for int settle down. We're putting nines in now. For int r equals zero, while r is less than this dot rows. R plus um, plus. Okay, so I didn't really plan this out very well. This is slightly awkward, but we've got to call the operator uh, parentheses manually, but never mind. It looks a bit strange, but let's just do it. Let's just do it. We're programmers. We don't mind looking strange. R and C, that's it. Plus equals um, Colvec operator. Uh, R and zero. So you see there, what we're doing is uh, we're kind of cheating. We're pretending as though col vec is, uh, is actually a matrix itself, when really it's just a column vector. Yeah, so we're just duplicating that column over and over again because we're using the index 0 as the, as the column each time. Now, if we come back to our layer class, we can perform this operation now. We can say sums uh, add col vec, and the col vec is bias. Yeah, something like that. So... After this layer has performed its multiplication with the weights of the previous layer, we've, we've almost fed forward, but we've got to continue pushing the data through. So the whole objective of the feed forward process is to take the input layer and push the data through all of the neurons uh, to the very end. So what we can say is uh, if uh, next layer, wait, 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 I didn't spell it right. If next layer, uh, does not equal null PTR, then next layer, whoops, forward prop, feed forward. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I want to mention that it's also at this point right here that we would uh, add the activation. So at the moment, we've sort of computed a raw score. This sums matrix just here is kind of the raw value um, of the neurons. But what we've got to do in order to make that slightly more useful, in order to make it compute things a little bit better, uh, we actually add what's called an activation function. Now, things get a little bit complicated there. We've got a few options, things like your ReLU or your Sigmoid. Uh, also, uh, it's... it's uh, also, it's a good idea often to mix things up a little bit and have um, some ReLU layers and some sigmoid layers. So I thought that would be too complicated to cram into this video and we'll leave it for next time. But um, that's happens, uh, that happens right here. 
So at this point here, we would um, perform the activation function. And the activation function actually leads to the activation matrix. So right here, this sums uh, matrix is really just a raw score kind of deal. After we've performed the activation function on the values in that sums matrix, uh, this layer will actually have uh, its activation. So then when we feed forward to the next layer, um, yeah, the next layer will actually be able to perform this operation. So at the moment, uh, we're not quite through our feed forward. We've still got this uh, activation functions idea, but yeah, hopefully it's coming together quite nicely. Okay, so that's about all that I wanted to do in this video. Now, uh, I do want to say that I've been spending a lot of time uh, trying to update the channel, uh, just adding tags. A lot of the videos didn't even have any tags. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Back in the day, I'll tell you. Uh, things have changed a lot in YouTube. They really have. I think we've been doing this for about 10 years now. So I think the whole channel is, is coming along nicely, really. And it's fun, really, to look back at some of those old videos. Um, the sound quality. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's... Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs> so the other thing that we've added is uh, down below you'll see a, a merchandise shelf. So a, a merchandise shelf for uh, Teespring. Yeah, so if you want to support the channel uh, and wear some beautiful What's A Creel merchandise, um, you can head down below to the Teespring store and get yourself a What's A Creel official t-shirt. Good times. So that's about all that I wanted to say. Thank you very much for watching and uh, have a really good day. Cheers.